Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial for importing from Icon directly into Unreal Engine. In the first part of this tutorial, we actually created this uh, little scene here. We imported in a, a couple of, an actual scene here, this Rome scene, and we replaced the uh, default Unity or Unreal 4 mannequin here with this uh, soldier dude from one of our content packs. All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to uh, import in your own custom animations and creating your own uh, a blueprint and everything like that. So we got a lot of stuff to cover. Let's get started right off the bat here by importing in from iClone again. So over in iClone, we have our character. We ended off here at the last tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to apply a couple of animations to this character. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, animations tab into the motions uh, folder here. And we should have one for the uh, human mocap uh, rifle uh, motions here. Let's go ahead and just uh, open this up a little bit. Uh, salt, there we go. Okay, so we want to go ahead and select the uh, patrol one. And in patrol, we have uh, standby. This is going to be our idle motion here. So let's double click on that folder. And we have this standby idle motion. So let's go ahead and just double click and apply that to my character. We can play back. And you can see there's the uh, standby motion right there. Okay, that's our idle. So what I need to do is press F3 and go into the timeline here. Scroll down a little bit. And uh, if we hold Alt and scroll our mouse button, we'll be able to zoom out of the timeline there. And you can see this is our motion clip right here that we're going to be applying uh, to our character in Unreal. So what we need to do is we need to go to the very last frame of this motion clip uh, right about here. Okay, it ends up being 467. We can actually click and drag it to the very beginning there. I might have applied it at a later frame there. So 463 is all the frames we need. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and press uh, go up to File rather and Export and Export FBX. Same thing, we're going to select Unreal, but this time we're going to choose Range. And for Range, we're going to choose 1, 2, 463. Uh, that's the extent of our animation there. Uh, we don't need textures, we don't need any of this stuff. We don't need any mesh really, but we're going to just go ahead and select Export. And we'll call that, uh, we'll just call it Idle, okay, for lack of a better name. Save it to our desktop. Okay, so once that's done, we'll go to our uh, desktop. And we can see we have the uh, Idle.fbx uh, right here. All right, so this is just the idle animation. That's all it is, really. There's still a mesh on there, though. Let's go back into iClone and quickly uh, load in our second animation. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on this uh, clip here. Let's press Delete, and our character will go back into the uh, regular T-pose here. We'll go back to frame one, and let's go to Patrol. And in Patrol, we have... Oop, it's a little bit further down here. We have uh, Alert, or rather, uh, Walk Loop, okay? So let's go ahead and just double-click on that. And you can see here we have this uh, Walk Loop. Just play back like that. And you can see that this actually is a root motion, which means our character will change position. If I press Control G to turn on my grid, you can see we have our character actually moving forward. Okay, so what we want to do is we can actually fix this in Unreal itself. Uh, I'll show you an option for that a little bit later, but it's really easy to do an iClone as well. If we just simply right click on our clip there, we can select Reset Pivot. And what that'll do is that'll make it a non-root motion. So the uh, stepping will be in the same position, okay? He'll remain stationary, even though it looks like he's stepping forward. Okay, and this is what we want uh, when we're exporting into Unreal, generally, okay? So let's go ahead into the last frame. You can see it, uh, the motion lasts for 43 frames. So go ahead and file export, and same thing, export FBX. And in the future, we will have multiple motion exports, but in this uh, procedure here, I'm just showing you how we can do it with the current version of iClone. So let's go ahead and select range, and change the range now to 43, okay? And we don't need any of these things. Just go ahead and press export. And we'll call this one walk. Okay. Go ahead and save that. All right. And boom, we're all done in iClone. So we can go ahead and close down iClone. We don't need it any longer. Let's go ahead and press no there. So now we have our idle. We have our walk. And we have our soldier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename this to soldier 2. Just to avoid confusion. Because what's going to happen is we're going to import it as its own skeleton. Okay. We're going to use the iClone skeleton. So that's the first item of business here. Let's go back into Unreal here and let's create a folder. Uh, let's create another uh, folder under Soldier maybe or just under Content, I guess. Uh, create a new folder here. Let's call it uh, Soldier, oops, Soldier 2, okay? Uh, just to avoid confusion, we'll go into that folder and we can right click and import and let's select our desktop here. Where are we? There we go, okay, and Soldier 2. Now we're pretty much going to use all the same options as our first soldier. However, for this one, we're going to select our own uh, skeleton. So we're not going to select UE4 mannequin skeleton. We're going to use this blank. And we're going to have these two selected, skeletal mesh and import mesh. Okay, and go ahead and select update skeletal reference and go ahead and select import. 
Okay, so once that's imported in, let's just go ahead and double click on the soldier skeletal mesh. Now you'll see a difference here if we go up to preview animation, we don't have any of those animations because we didn't use the Unreal Engine 4 default skeleton. Okay, so let's close this down right now. We're going to basically just copy the blueprint from the default skeleton or from the default character and create our own here. And before we do that, let's import in our animations. So let's create another folder, yet another folder in content, and let's call this one animations. Okay, just to kind of keep things at the top level here. So we'll go to animations. And I'm going to right click and import in and let's select our walk and our idle control select both of those and select open. Now here we don't need to import in the uh, mesh or anything like that, but we do need to choose our skeleton. And this time we're going to choose the soldier two skeleton. Okay. We don't need the mesh and anything like that. Like I mentioned, make sure your animation length is set to animated time as well. Okay. So it's very important and everything else should be okay. Let's just go ahead and import all. Okay, and don't worry about all these error messages for now. There we have our walk and our idle. If I double click on the idle, you'll see right there, everything is set. We have our character mesh, the soldier two mesh doing the idle there. All right, good stuff. So we have all the animations imported correctly. So let's go ahead then and make a copy of the blueprints. So what I'm gonna do is go to uh, third person blueprints here, and we're going to right click on the third person character and just make a duplicate of it. And we're gonna call this one uh, BP underscore, let's call it, whoops, underscore, there we go, soldier two, okay, and press enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that into another folder. Let's uh, create another, get another folder here called uh, blueprints. We'll just call it uh, soldier underscore blueprint maybe, okay. And uh, let's click and drag that duplicate that we made into that folder there, okay, into soldier blueprints. And we're going to move it there, not copy it there, because we don't want two copies of the same thing. All right, so there we go. Now let's double click on this blueprint right here and let's go to viewport and see our mesh and make sure that our mesh is set to soldier two. Okay, very important. You can see there's no animation on it and we're going to create our own uh, blueprint a little bit later on, which we'll put in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just compile that and give it a save. And now we need to create our animation blueprints. So let's close down our character blueprint and right click and go to animations and we're going to create an animation blueprint. All right. And we'll just select our soldier here. This is very important. You need to select the soldier too. This is the character or the mesh rather, or the skeleton that we're creating this animation blueprint for. So let's press okay. And let's call this ABP underscore soldier two. Okay. Just to keep uh, the naming conventions correct. And let's double click and go into that. Okay. And you can see with this, we have the final animation pose. This is the animation that's going to be, you know, piped out. And we have the two animations here that we imported for our Soldier 2 skeleton. So we have the idle right here. If we double click on that, you can see right there. And let's go back and just close that down. We can actually click and drag it into our animation graph here. And if we pipe that into our final animation pose, what's going to happen is if we go ahead and compile it. You can see in the top uh, left there, our preview, our character is going to be doing the idle. All right. Pretty cool stuff. It's really easy. But of course, that's really too simple because we need to create a state machine here that uh, creates the transition between idle and walk when we use our you know forward or uh, WASD hotkeys or whatever, or control keys, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead and just delete that uh, play idle right now. And you can do the same thing with the walk. We'll just skip that for now. What I want to do is right click and we're going to create a state machine. So let's enter and type in state machine here and add new state machine. So let's type the state machine into the final animation pose and we need to uh, name the state machine whatever we want let's call it uh i don't know idle underscore walk okay because that's the only two states in this state machine here and we'll double click and go into this state machine and in the state machine what we need to do is just click and drag in our idle animation just like this and we'll press enter to call it idle and we'll enter in the walk one as well okay so we just have two states in our state machine basically the most simple uh, the simplest state machine you can possibly have so what I want to do is pipe in entry into the idle. Okay. Make sure it's highlighted in white like that. Okay. And then what we want to do is also create a transition from idle to walk. Okay. So let's click and drag from idle to walk. Okay. And it'll come up with this little doodad here. Uh, what we need to do here is we need to create a variable. So let's go over here and press the plus key under variables and we'll call this new variable, uh, can under, or can walk. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So now we have a can walk uh, Boolean variable. Okay. So what I'm going to do is we can just double click this right here and we need to bring our can walk 
variable right here. So we need to get can walk and click and drag it to pipe it into the can enter transition. So basically if can walk is, is true or active, then our character will enter the transition from idle into the walk state. I think that's a good way to explain it. And we can just go ahead and compile and uh, save that. And let's go back to the idle to walk level right here. So now we have the idle to walk. You can see right there, if we have a certain state, then it goes from idle to walk. But we need to actually have a, a state that goes re returns from walk to idle if the, if the uh, finger is released from the button. So let's click and drag from walk to idle there as well. And uh, whoops, click and drag like this. There we go. Make sure it's on the white there. And double click in here. And we need the same thing. So can walk, we're going to click and drag that in and get can walk. But here we need to add in a not boolean because if the uh, button is not pressed, so we'll just uh, type in uh, not and select not boolean right here, then it's going to return from the walk to the idle state. Okay, let's just go ahead and compile and save that. And pretty simple stuff. Let's see, let's go back to this level right here. So if the button is pressed, then it'll go from idle to walk and vice versa. And that's pretty much it for our uh, our state machine. Everything's all set for the state machine, so we can just go ahead and close this down for now. All right, so at this point, we're completely done with our animation blueprint, so we need to go ahead and modify, integrate that into our character blueprint. So I'm gonna double click on the character blueprint here, make sure we have our mesh selected over here, and go to our viewport, and you can see our soldier character. We have the skeletal mesh selected as soldier, like uh, and at, at the end of the previous tutorial there. So now we're gonna change it to soldier two, okay? And we're going to change our anim class from none to the animation blueprint that we created. So animation blueprint uh, ABP soldier. And then you can see our soldier gets into his idle position. And this is basically all we want to do at this point. So we can go ahead and compile that and save that. And then we need to go into the event graph because we need to create an event tick that allows us to get the values, the move forward and move right values, to determine when our character will go from the idle pose into the uh, kind of gun pointed forward pose and walking. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is right click and enter an event tick, okay? And press enter to add that in. And we need to also get those two values. So get input access, move right and left. So I'm gonna right click and say uh, get uh, move forward. Oops, get uh, move forward. Oh, let's just type in uh, move forward actually, move forward. Okay, and we need to access values move forward right here. So get move forward and right click and move right. Okay, and just uh, click on that for move right. And we need to go ahead and create a branch for our event tick because we need to have uh, kind of two conditions. So I'm gonna click and drag from our event tick and just create a branch, branch, flow control. All right, there we go. And then our conditions will go in the bottom there. Okay, so we need to have a couple of values here, a couple of float values for our get move forward and get move right. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag from the uh, get move forward and just type in exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark, not equal. Okay, so we need to get a float value, not equal right there. And let's go ahead and move that a little bit forward. We can actually just copy and paste that. So control C and control V to copy and paste that and paste it over here. And then we're gonna pipe in the return value for the move right into that as well. And those two need to connect into an or Boolean. Okay, so let's go ahead and click in from there and just type in or. All right, so or Boolean right there and Click the move right into that as well. And then we're gonna just basically pump that into the condition uh, uh, section there of the uh, branch. So let's go ahead and connect that there. And from this point on, we also need to get our animation instance. So let's go ahead and right click and type in anim instance. Okay, so get animation instance for the mesh right here, our skeletal mesh. And don't worry about that mesh section over there. So we need to go ahead and push, push this there as well. And then we need to cast those values to our animation blueprint. So let's go ahead and right click. We can click and drag from our return value here. And we want to just type in uh, uh, cast to, and we need to type in our select ABP soldier because that's the blueprint we're using. And we need to create another one of those. So I'm just gonna control C, control V that and click and drag this one over there. And the return value can go from this to ob the other object as well. And the top one we're going to be Setting that one to the can walk value of true. Okay, so I'm gonna click from this branch and true is gonna go over there and false is gonna go over here. And then we need to basically go from as ABP soldier and we're going to choose a can walk. Okay, so we need to set can walk. And this one's going to be true. Okay, 
uh, because the true goes up to here. Uh, and this one, we're going to do the same thing. So we can actually just click in our Control-C, Control-V that again and uh, move this one down here. And this is going to be the false one. So we're going to select can or deselect can walk and then just move this over here or target. We can also connect these two uh, white ones up here and we should be good to go. So apologies if I went through that a little bit fast, but we have other tutorials. There's more detailed Unreal tutorials on that. I can link those in the description as well. But for now, we're just going to go with this. Go ahead and compile it. Hopefully everything's okay. Awesome. And then we'll go ahead and save that and close down our character blueprint. At this point, you can delete the character mesh if you still have it on the screen, which I've already done. Just make sure your uh, player control uh, component here is uh, on top of uh, something that has collision. So it, when it drops down, it'll kind of land on it. And then what I want to do is go up to Settings and go to Project Settings here. And we need to go into Maps and Modes. And for our default pawn class, we're going to change that from third person character to our BP soldier character. All right. Good to go. So that's pretty much all we need to do. Go ahead and close that down and we can give it a play. And here's our character. All right. So if we click in it, we can see our character in his idle that we imported in from iClone there. We can walk forward. And here we have, you can see the kind of walk forward like this. All right. So we just imported in those two actions. Like I mentioned, pretty much the, the most simple state machine you can possibly have here uh, with this, these two animations kind of blended together but that's how easy it is to import directly from iClone uh, your character and animations and your entire scene into Unreal and get it in your scene like this. I can press F11 to give us a full screen view right here on our character. All right, so that's really about all there is to it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial and we'll have other tutorials on uh, importing iClone assets into Unreal in the future. But for now, that's about it. So uh, hopefully you learned a lot and I hope to see you in the next video.